Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 20th day of August, Tuesday, 2024, and today's topic is titled, He Will Come, and yes, He's coming again, and He will come and get us in the rapture whenever that day may happen. It could be today, and as the Bible says, He says, uh, Jesus says, He's coming quickly, amen, and uh, hopefully that will be today, but in the meantime, let's continue uh, going on for the Lord and serving the Lord and telling people about Jesus so they can be saved and all that. So, uh, amen, wherever you're listening from, uh, just keep on keeping on for Jesus and focus on Him and uh, all that, and you'll be quite all right and get into a good Bible-believing church and fellowship around believers, those that want to follow the Lord, those that don't want to be caught up in drama and, and backbiting and all that, and and uh, continue on and uh, do what's right and, and live right and all that and and uh, amen so that'll be the topic for today and we'll get into that here in a little bit but first i'd like to greet you as always in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ who is the lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the world and he too can be your lord and savior today if he's not already and that is the most important thing that you can ever do is trust jesus believe on him and what he did on the cross is death, burial, and resurrection, and he will save your soul, wash all your sin away, and then, excuse me, the Holy Spirit will come and dwell inside of you, and guide you and direct you in all truth, and show you how to live, and get into a good Bible-believing church, and under uh, good teaching and preaching from God's Word, and uh, amen, and around fellowship of believers, and edify one another, and, and encourage each other to keep going, so, all right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song which is from 1 Corinthians 14.33. And let's go ahead here and um, look at 1 Corinthians 14. I don't think it's a... Um, let's see here. It is quite a little bit of a long chapter here. So we'll see here uh, 1 Corinthians 14. <clears throat> let's see here. All right, so it's got 40 verses here. So I encourage you to uh, read the whole entirety of the chapter on your own time uh, there. So a uh, good chapter, as they all are. So I encourage you to read all that chapter on your own. And we'll just go ahead and do the um, scripture song for a day. Let's see if there's any context around this verse here. So verse 33. Uh, all right, so... Nothing really, I mean, um, you can, I mean, the whole chapter you can apply and together here, and but we'll just focus on the scripture song verse for today from verse 33, and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty on the CD here, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God, God is, is not, not the author, author of confusion, of confusion but of peace, as, as in all, all churches, churches of the saints. The saints. That's right. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints, as in all churches of the saints, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. And I'll put that back to yesterday's scripture song, and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. And now it's time to get into today's topic for this 20th day of August 2024 Tuesday titled he will come and Hebrews 10 37 is the passage and again encourage you to read all of Hebrews chapter 10 on your own time another lengthy um, uh, chapter there so it says here for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry amen and that's talking about Jesus there and today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic. He writes here, uh, The last verse in Hebrews 10 has an interesting fr uh, phrase to contemplate, 
but we are not of them. Yes, we are not of them that draw back, right? So we're not of them that draw back, verses 38 and 39. And he continues on and says, Friend, we have nothing to draw back or go back to, right? So nothing to draw back or go back to, especially that's good, because <laughs> everything we have now is good in Christ. Uh, and then he continues on and says, Forward is our only direction. Advance our only command. So let's go forward. March on. March on. And go forward and don't go back. Right? And he writes on here, By the way, as the songwriter, Esther uh, Rathoi, Rathoi, R-U-S-T-H-O-I, Rathoi, Though I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. If I pronounce it wrong, I apologize. Uh, so, uh, Rester, or Est, Esther R Restoi, 1909 to 62, penned, It will be worth it all when we see Christ, and it sure will be. And that's a good hymn there. Maybe we'll sing that one today too. So, uh, it will be worth it all when we see Christ. An anonymous hymn master wrote, Press on. It won't be long. It will not be long. Amen. And then he writes on. He says here, My hope is constructed and stands firm in the never-failing word of God. Hopefully yours does too. And if not, let's stand firm in the never-failing word of God. It says, I believe in a perfect book. I do too. And that's the Bible, the King James Bible. I believe in a perfect book that tells of precious blood that was shed on Calvary by a perfect sacrificial lamb to redeem men from an ignoble fate. Hebrews chapter 9 speaks of his redeeming blood, verse 12, his cleansing blood, verse thir uh, 14, his transforming blood, verse 15, plus his all-encompassing blood, verse 28. So that's all in chapter 9 there. <clears throat> so again, uh, it speaks of his redeeming blood, verse 12, his cleansing blood, verse 14, his transforming blood, verse 15, plus his all-encompassing blood, verse 28. Hallelujah. The blessed hope that resonates within the inner being of the redeemed creates an attitude of, I can't help but go overboard, onward, and upward in serving Christ. Christians are referred to as the bride of Christ, Revelation 29, 9, and as persuaded, wooed, and desired, or and a desired bride would say yes to her beloved suitor. We have said yes to Christ at his proffered, perfect, precious, and permanent offer of eternal salvation. <laughs> Try saying that uh, three times fast. So again, um, we say uh, we have said yes to Christ at his pr proffered, perfect, precious, and permanent offer of eternal salvation. By the way, his promised return is just as sure as his salvation that he has so freely given. Amen. He will come to take us his bride, and the royal wedding will take place in the land of promise called heaven and home. And yes, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Revelation 19.7 And he concludes with this. He says, See you at the marriage supper. So, Amen. So if we never meet Brother Green on this side of um, heaven, we'll meet him at the um, uh, in the rapture and then at the marriage supper. Amen. <laughs> All right. So that's a good topic there. And yes, Jesus will come again. And he's coming for us quickly. And I'm going to take us up one day in the rapture. And then we'll spend um, some time up there with him. And then we'll come back down here to the earth. And we'll rule and reign with him when he sets up his earthly kingdom on this earth. <clears throat> and all that so all right looking forward to that day looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of um, christ jesus our lord and all that and uh so you can read some scripture there from uh first thessalonians uh chapter four or is it no what is it is it chapter four i think first thessalonians I'll make sure i give you the right chapter here so Yep, chapter 4. So, chapter 4, starting in verse uh, 13, and then it goes all the way to the end of the 
chapter there, in verse 18. So that's talking about the rapture there, the catching away of the church. <clears throat> and uh, that will happen before the tribulation time starts. So, amen. Okay, now let's get into the topic for today as we're continuing on this weekly topic on ministry. And today is day 199, Tuesday, titled, The Ministry of the Word. And Acts 6, 4 says, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so that's the verse there. And let's go ahead and look at chapter 6 and uh, find out who wrote, uh, who said this. Uh, so let's see, Acts chapter 6. And go back here to the beginning of chapter 6. So it says here in verse 1, it says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So they were arguing about who was going to um, clean tables and all that. It says, And the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, for are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And then verse 5 says, And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Procurius, and uh, Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they uh, set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders. And miracles among the people. And might as well read the rest of the chapter here. Verse 9 says, Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customers or customs excuse me change the customs which uh, Moses delivered us and all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him uh, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel and then continues that uh, in chapter 7 there <clears throat> on that account so uh, amen all right so that was the chapter there but we'll uh, can get into here um, again the topic here that we'll focus on today is the ministry of the word which we're talking about how they um continued on um, in prayer and ministry of the word and then set these certain men to to uh, take care of the tables and all that uh, while they while they went to continue on um, preaching the word and all that so now introductory thoughts on that verse there and the surrounding verses talking in the context there what happened in that situation so uh, it says here, uh, Brother Stoffer and Brother Andrew Ray uh, wrote this. So this is what they uh, wrote here in the introductory thoughts. It says, as is common with church growth, problems arose very early in the church at Jerusalem. Acts 6 tells us of the Grecians who began to murmur against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected. Acts 6, 1, the apostles chose not to ignore the problem, but to tackle it head on. Yet they understood their primary responsibilities of not leaving their study of the word of God in order to focus on handling the strife. 
The apostles instructed the disciples in the church to choose seven men to deal with this particular issue and similar issues that might arise later, Acts 6.3. The Bible also points out that the apostles determined to give themselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, Acts 6.4. They understood that their study and distribution of the word of God was to take the preeminence in their ministry. <clears throat> so, amen. So they set certain um, people, men, to take care of these issues that arise in the church and all that. Why they continue on with the um, distribution of the word of God. And continue on that being the preeminence in their ministry. And now devotional thoughts. Uh, for children, and of course you can apply this to everyone in certain ways. It says here the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8 was reading the book of Isaiah, but did not understand what he read. Because Philip had studied the scriptures, he was able to explain to the eunuch what he was reading, Acts 8, 30-35. Ezra is another example of someone who studied Ezra 7, 10, and helped others learn God's word, Nehemiah 8, 8. God wants us to learn his word so we can help others. Amen. And now for everyone, according to 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it seems as though everyone has some responsibility to teach others the word of God. What are some ways in which you can fulfill this ministry in the life of others? Uh, who is the primary responsibility, or excuse me, who has the primary responsibility for teaching your family the word of God? Who is responsible for teaching new believers or those who might be weak in the faith? Are you willing to devote your time and strength to minister to them? Mm. So that would be good. So take time to minister to others, uh, whoever it may be, your family, friends, um, loved ones, all that, co-workers, perhaps. All right, so good devotional thoughts. And now for prayer thoughts, it says here, Ask the Lord to give you a burden to minister God's word to others. And then ask God to help you to be diligent in studying his word. And that's important to study his word. And then the hymn for today is titled, Ye Servants of God, Your Master Proclaim. And that's the first or the second hymn that we'll sing. And I was able to find uh, the hymn in the book there and even an instrumental. And it's one of those hymns way back at the beginning of the of the book there so we'll do the second hymn which i could not find an instrumental to that one so i'll just read you the stanzas to that one and then give you the references <clears throat> and there is a story to this one so this is a uh, first one here and this starts uh this series of hymns on the ordinances of the church a spiritual song and this is hymn 839 in the book titled rise to be baptized and this is written by Samuel uh, Deacon, who lived from 1746 to 1816. And then Robert Lowry, 1826 to 1899. Uh, three stanzas here, so I'll read you all three of them and then give you the story here at the bottom and then the references. So stanza one says this. It says, when Saul on persecution bent with letters to Damascus went, a light beyond the solar ray surprised him in Mid Midrian day enlightened by celestial beams he drops his per persecuting schemes and trembling cries to Jesus now with Lord what wouldst thou have me do stanza 2 Jesus with pity in his breast answers the Pentian's request Saul of his duty well bat er, well of uh, Prized, rose at his word and was baptized Jesus is sovereign still and we are subject to his wise decree and what was right for Saul to do is right for us to practice too stanza 3 for we behold a light divine celestial beams upon us shine the voice of Jesus we have heard and him with reverence regard Lord, we no longer hesitate, our souls to thee we dedicate. With pleasure we thy word obey, and rise to be baptized today. So, that's the hymn there. <clears throat> and uh, realize that 
Uh, water baptism doesn't save your soul, but it is a uh, believer's baptism that you do have to get saved to, as an uh, outward showing of you trusting Christ as your Savior. Uh, so all of that, so we got to make sure we understand that there. So, But that is a good hymn there. Too bad there was not an instrumental for it. At least I couldn't find one. Maybe you can have somebody play this for you if you have a copy of the book. So, all right. So now the story here at the bottom of the page, it says, uh, Deacon began preaching in August 1777. He committed to paper in that beginning of labors. He uh, His thoughts concerning his duty to warn the world of sin uh, were a neighbor neighbor's house on fire, and I f the first who discovered it. How should I act? Should I go and rap at the door and coolly desire to speak with the master and cautiously address him? All wise men would count this unpardonable uh, and uh, ab abominated uh, abominably uh, ridiculous should not I run through the streets and cry with the utmost uh, 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 vehemence whether they were kings or uh, clowns who uh, heard me fire fire for nearly 40 years he pastored a earnestly proclaiming the gospel with this zeal and earnestness so we are to run in the streets and, and yell out, uh, get saved, believe on Jesus, like, like we're supposed to do. Get out there in the highways and byways and, and uh, in your town and warn people what's going to happen to them if they don't trust Jesus, that they're going to die in their sin and end up in hellfire for all eternity. Just like um, if there was a fire happening in someone's house, you'd be running as quick as you could and, and saying, fire, fire, emergency, emergency. Get out! <laughs> right, so that's what we're doing. <clears throat> a lot of people don't like that, but it's what we need to do. So get out there and proclaim the word, lift up your voice, and preach the gospel, and warn people today um, that they're on their way to perishing in their sin for all eternity, and they need a Savior. So, all right, so that was a good little story there uh, from this hymn, and now the references. Uh, stanza 1, we have Acts 9-2, Acts 9-3, Acts 9-20, and Acts 9-6. Stanza 2 is Acts 9-6 again, Acts 9-18, Matthew 28-19, uh, and Acts 18-8. And then stanza 3, we have John 1-9, Matthew 11-28, 2 Corinthians 6-2, and Acts 16-33. So that is the end of the first hymn, and now we're going to go all the way back to the beginning of the book here, to hymn number seven, <clears throat> and put that there, and this is uh, titled, Ye Servants of God, Your Master Proclaim, and this is uh, hymn number seven, The Worship of God, a spiritual song, written by Charles Wesley, and he lived from 1707 to 1788, and then William Croft, C R O. F.T. William Croft, 1678 to 1727, and there is a story for this one, and so let's go ahead and press play, and I might have to start this over uh, uh, again, because there's six stanzas here, not sure how many stanzas they do in the instrumental, so here we go. Servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name. The name all victorious of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious and rules over all. Waves of the sea have lift up their voice, sore trouble that we in Jesus rejoice. The floods they are roaring, but Jesus is here, 
While we are adoring, He always is near. Men, devils engage, the billows arise, and horribly rage and threaten the skies. Their fury shall never our steadfastness shock. The weakest believer is built on a rock. <clears throat> God ruleth on high, almighty to save, and still he is nigh. His presence we have, the great congregation, His triumph shall sing, ascribing salvation to Jesus our King. Salvation to God, who sits on the throne. Let all cry aloud, and honor hit the Son. Our Jesus praises the angels, and proclaim, fall down on their faces, and on their faces, and worship, worship the Lamb. Then let us adore and give him his right, all glory and power and wisdom and might, all honor and blessing with angels above and never ceasing an infinite love. Amen. So that's the hymn there. <clears throat> and now let me read you the story here at the bottom of the page. It says here, this song was first published among 32 others in a work entitled Hymns for Times of Trouble and Persecution. It was par uh, particularly uh, positioned at as the first of the section labeled hymns to be sung in a tumult as Wesley was summoned before the magistrates amidst religious persecution and political upheaval, his pen begat the heartfelt lines of the song. It testifies that man's unwavering faith triumphs in the Almighty that yet ruleth on high regardless of the flood's roar. So, amen. All right, so that's the story behind the hymn there. And now the references. We have here stanza 1. We have Deuteronomy 32, 3, Philippians 2, 9 through 10, and Ephesians 1, 21 through 23. Stanza 2 is uh, Jude, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 9. Stanza 3 is Philippians 3, 18, and 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Stanza 4, we have... Psalm 34, 18, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 7, and Revelation 7, 10, and then stanza 5 is Revelation 7, 10 again, Revelation 7, 12, and then Revelation 7, 11, and then stanza 6, we have Revelation 7, 12 again, and that is it for the references for this hymn. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and put this back to tomorrow's hymn, and we'll put that aside for right now. We'll Get the scripture song book and sing the scripture songs from yesterday and today one more time. And then we'll uh, wrap it up after that. So yesterday was Isaiah 12, all six verses here. So here we go. Oop. There we go. All right. Isaiah 12, 1 through 6. And, and in that day thou shalt, shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. 
Though thou, thou wast angry, angry with me, thy anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw waters out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted, sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Here we go. <coughs> And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song he also is become my salvation therefore with joy shall ye draw water out, water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, Make mention that his name, that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel. In the midst of thee, in the midst of thee. Now today, so one more time. First Corinthians fourteen thirty three. For God is not the author of confusion, Praise God but for of that. peace, as in all churches of the saints. And here we go. For, for God, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. But of peace. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints, as in all churches of the saints. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, but of peace. Amen. So you can have peace in the Lord. Praise God for that. <clears throat> All right. So that is it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist Bread and the Daily Strength Volume 2 books and then the hymns for tomorrow. And then I'll give you some information from the book I've been reading on the podcast and then uh, the other broadcasts I do where I've been reading Brother James's book uh, from Genesis, uh, commentary series there. And so tomorrow is the 21st, and 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52 is the scripture song. And it says here, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And that's talking about the rapture, which we were talking about a little bit today from the Baptist bread um, topic today, a little bit. So, amen. And uh, one day we will get caught up there in the twinkling, t twinkling of eye, the last trump and all that. So, amen. All right, so that's tomorrow's scripture song uh, there. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled interpreting life right so interpreting life right and the passage is first thessalonians 2 2 and tomorrow's author is rp i believe that's the initials for um randy pike so yep randy pike and he's deceased he was from greenville south carolina so that'll be the topic for tomorrow for wednesday the 21st and there is no topic for tomorrow's daily strength volume 2 book uh, but we are continuing on this topic of ministry. And tomorrow is day 200, church night. And Acts 20, 24 is the passage. So we'll go over that and we'll make look at that in its entirety there. The entirety of Acts uh, 20 there and get some context of what's going on in that chapter. So, so that will be the passage for tomorrow from the Daily Strength. <clears throat> and then only one hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow's hymn will be... Uh, be another one of these ordinances of the church a spiritual song this one's titled planted together as we read and this is hymn 840 and this is written by anna b man and she uh lived in the 18th century and this is also from anonymous from the a collection of church music <clears throat> 1849 and then we'll probably pick another one tomorrow we'll um, since we didn't sing that one that I said we were going to sing today, what was it? Um, uh, what was the title of that one here? Uh, it was, um, It Will Be Worth It All When We See Christ. So we'll sing that one as the second one for tomorrow. So that'll be the second hymn we sing. And so there is a story for this hymn also. And so this is the cover of the hymn book, the dark blue cover. And there's also a lighter bluish grayish cover and then there's a brown cover and a leather a leather bound edition and then i'm not sure if they still have the spinal edition here this is this type of side backing which would replace this type of side backing as i like to explain here if you're wondering what that what that is that spinal edition there and whichever one you prefer if you want to get a couple different ones you you can do that on the website which i'll give you here in a minute and this is the daily strength volume 2 book by brother douglas d stoffer and andrew b ray and there's four volumes to this series of devotional books and they're good to have in the hymn book so that's melodypublications.com is the website there to get those books <clears throat> and then the scripture song book and cds you can get those online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, and they were missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana, but they won't be returning full-time, but I'm sure they'll be taking trips there periodically as they're able to with Brother Dean's health and all that, and um, pray that the, uh, the missionary work there and ministry continues on there, and uh, brothers and sisters that live locally there have taken over the work, and pray that they can find a pastor there to take over um, for the church there and all that, so... All right, so amen for them and the scripture songs there. And then the Baptist Bread uh, book here. This is the one from uh, last month and this month. And if you order now, you'll most likely get the one for September and October. And I'm hoping to get the box here soon. Uh, it's coming a little late this uh, month, but hopefully it gets here. Um, so uh, that's a um, box of 10, and it's twelve ninety five Every other month, you'll get the box there. And that's baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and that second website has other books and stuff on there and you can find out about Brother Green's ministry there and what he does uh, for the Lord and all that and then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God this is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the Word of Truth and going to God in prayer and seeking His face and all that and have a good relationship with the Lord and and uh, and study God's word out and brother Mike and brother Ed had a good topic last night that they answered so um, if you watch 
the Q and A. Uh, they do that every Monday night. Uh, KJV Bible Scope on either YouTube or Facebook, and they do that live at um, eight o'clock Eastern Time every Monday night. And you can watch it live, or you can go back and watch the replay of it. And uh, they had a lot of uh, notes for you to take last night, so. Uh, check that out. Good topic um, about um, the question was, is uh, Jesus the Father and all that? So they explained that uh, last night. <clears throat> and uh, that'll be a help to you there. And uh, so again, that's uh, KJV Bible Scope Q&A. Every Monday night they do that, Brother Mike and uh, Brother Ed. And that's 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can go back and watch the replay on either Facebook or YouTube. And they're both the same uh, um there, KJV Bible Scope, and then, um, <clears throat> so that's that information there for their um, broadcast there, and then also um, this book I've been reading on the podcast that I do, God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast on Spotify, um, iHeart, and now Podbean, so this is the title of the book that I've been reading uh, over the um, last few times, I'm on, just got done with chapter uh, four, um, read that last night and uploaded <clears throat> to that platform there and this is titled you can't do that the story of william h milburn and this is the amazing story of how a blind boy became a wilderness circuit rider and congregational chaplain by carolyn hobbs and you can probably get a copy of this book at children's bible club.com or you can uh, uh contact uh, uh, her aunt carolyn at children's bible club.com and so that's what this is published and printed by the Children's Bible Club, a division of Gospel Projects Press, 6331 Chestnut Street, Milton, Florida, 32570. And this is a little booklet here. It's got six chapters here. They're not very lengthy. It's just a little booklet here that tells about uh, this man here, uh, this brother in Christ who was a circuit riding preacher and all that. So good little book. Uh, to have and so that's that information there to to watch uh to listen to that if you like to uh, have audiobooks read to you and stuff and have done many of those um over the past uh, couple of years so that's uh god's messenger lighthouse podcast on spotify iHeartRadio, and now podbean so check that out and then the uh, other broadcasts i've been doing where i've been reading through brother james's book of genesis part of the christ honoring commentary series and this is the cover of the old book. This is not in print uh, at the present time in book form, but there is a PDF file out there that you can probably find on the church website or contact somebody to have them send you uh, that PDF file if you want to get a copy of this, or you can probably find a used copy out there somewhere. And this was a devotional type of commentary that Brother James did, the only one he ever did in this format. Different topics and outlines for each day of the year. And we've come to this 20th day of August, the death of of a beloved wife is the title there and that's already up to watch on facebook and i'll be uploading it to youtube here in a little bit so as soon as i'm done with this uh, top, uh baptist bread for today and so that's uh, the book there and you can find most of brother james's books and sermons online at www.jameswnox.org that's the church website the bible baptist church in deland florida and so check out his books and preaching and teaching from God's Word, from Brother James and Brother David and many other men who teach and preach God's Word during the Sunday school hours and times when uh, they're traveling and all that. So check that out. And then the YouTube channel is James Knox Sermon's YouTube channel. That's the church YouTube channel there. And then if you want to find uh, older um, videos from the Baptist Bread and the uh, Book of Genesis and other um, stuff that I've posted up there, uh, you can go to Ambassador for Christ broadcasting or typing in baptist bread broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i'm posting these up on the youtube channel so that's about it for today so thanks for watching and may the lord richly bless you until next time bye bye for now